talk about conditional probability. Conditional probability exists when two events are dependent. So previously we've done most of what we have done have been with independent events. Now we're talking about dependent events. Okay. Um, before we get into the formula, we're going to talk about a contingency table, also known as a two-way frequency table. And it is a frequency table that contains data from two different categories. Okay, so we have an example here. The table shows the number of students of each gender at two-year and four-year colleges and graduate schools in the year 2005. And they want us to, they want us to find out what is the probability of four-year, and this line here, we haven't talked about that before, means given that. So this is the mathematical way of writing what is the probability that I pick a four-year student that given that that student is a male. So the total population I'm choosing from are my males, but I want to know how many of those are four-year students. So we do need to add up all of our male students and we get seven five three nine seven thousand seven thousand five hundred thirty nine and that would be our total males and how many of them are four-year college graduates four three two four so you would put that in your calculator make sure that it does not reduce it does not you can leave it as a fraction in simplest form or put it to a decimal or percent. Sometimes I like the percents, so either answer is fine. Okay, here's another chart. Americans recycle increasing amounts through municipal waste collection. The table shows the collection data for 2007. What is the probability that a sample of recycled waste is plastic? So the hardest part you got to decide is which part depends on the other. And from our sentence, what is the probability that a sample of recycled waste is plastic? So what is the probability it's plastic? That's what we're looking for, given that it's recycled. So I'm going to, again, find out the total amount of recycled add that all up you're going to get 79.4 and how much of that is plastic 2.1 so I have 2.1 over 79.4 can't leave a decimal in a fraction because that would be a complex fraction and not simplified so I move the decimal over one in each spot like multiplying by 10 and then that cannot be reduced so again that's a good answer if you want to change it to a percent Okay, that would be dividing and then move your decimal over two places to get 2.6%. Okay, down here we have what is the probability that a sample of recycled waste is glass. Okay, again, all right, we're looking for glass. So what's the probability of glass given that I have recycled waste? So my total recycled waste, we already figured out, was 79.4. What part of that is glass? 3.2. Simply, I move the decimal point over, so I have 32 over 794. I can see both of those are even numbers. So that brings me to 16 over 397. And I think that's as far as you can go in the fraction. Again, the percent would be 4.03%. Okay, now let's talk about a formula. Again, we have two events, A and B, with the probability of A not equal to zero. And this is read the probability of B given that 
A has happened. I mean, we don't read it like that. We read probability of B given A. So just think about the fact that, let me go back and uh, take out the that. We'll just say, because I was just reading it. Okay, what's the probability of B given A? And you calculate that probability by finding the probability of B and A over the probability of A. Now, we have some more charts and tables. We're going to actually use the formula because sometimes you aren't given the charts and formulas. So you do need to know how to do it otherwise. So we're going to go practice and you can easily check as we go along because you can see it from the chart. So as I read this, a utility company asked 50 of its customers whether they pay their bills online or by mail. What is the probability that a customer pays the bill online given that the customer is mail? So they made this one a little bit easier for us. They said given that it's mail, so I want to know what's the probability he pays online given that he is mail. So if we use our formula, that's going to be the probability of a person being online, paying online and being mail over the probability of him being mail. So when you're trying to find the probability of somebody that you choose being online and mail, you do have to find out how many total people we're talking about. They tell us up here. You can add up all your numbers. You're still going to get 50. How many of those are online and mail? That would be 12. Keep in mind, probability always has to be less than 1, between 0 and 1. And what would be the probability that he would be mail? If we add up our males, that would be this way. Then you see that we have 12 plus 8, or 20, out of those 50 customers being male. So we simplify that. When I have a fraction over fraction and my denominators are the same, I can get rid of those and go 12 to 20. Just a simplified keep change flip. Divide top and bottom by 4, and we'll get 3 fifths. Again, you can leave it as 3 fifths. Percent would be 60%. Okay, and the next one. Again, doing the same process that we did. Researchers ask shampoo users whether they apply shampoo directly to the head or indirectly using the hand. What is the probability that a respondent applies shampoo directly to the head given that the respondent is female? So, again, they gave us, we know that they're female, so they apply shampoo to their head given that they are female. So applying our formula, that means I'm going to find the probability of a person applying the shampoo to their head and being female over the probability of the person being female. So, again, we have to add up all those people. Sometimes it's helpful to go back and look at the problem. They didn't tell us how many people. But 18 plus 2 is 20. 24 and 6 is 30. So 20 and 30 is 50. So we have a total of 50 people each time. What is the probability that they put it on their head and they're female? Is 6. What's the probability that they're female? 24 plus 6 is 30. So we have 6 over 30, which is 1 over 5. Again, acceptable answer if you want to change it to percent. You may do so. Okay, the last, last example we're going to talk about is a tree diagram. And sometimes tree diagrams are easier to use and figure out than using the formula. So we're going to kind of do it instead of the formula. A school system compiled the following information from our survey. It's sent to people who were juniors 10 years earlier. Okay, 85% of the students graduated from high school. So of those juniors that I had, I had those that graduated and those that did not graduate. And this would be 0.85 and this would be 0.15. Then it tells me of the students who graduated from high school, 
90% are happy with their present jobs. So moving along this branch of my tree, okay, I'm going to go two different ways. And I'm going to say part of them are happy and part of them are not happy. The happy part is 0.9. The unhappy part, of course, would be 0.1 because these two numbers will always add up to 1. So we do the same thing with those that did not graduate. Of the students who did not graduate from high school, okay, they're either going to be happy or they're not. So we got the happy and the not happy. And it tells us that 60% or 0.6 are happy. That means 0.4 are not happy. So we, okay, now we got to read our problem. What is the probability that a student from the junior class 10 years ago did not graduate and is happy with her, his or her present job? Now, hopefully you do realize that these two events are dependent, okay, because our answer is dependent on whether or not they did graduate from high school. But we are also looking along this branch of our tree. Probability did not graduate and are happy. So that's the branch we're looking at. And what we have here is just like we talked about independent. If we had the probability of not, actually we'll use my abbreviations that I had, the probability of not graduating and happy. Okay? Yesterday we talked about that. We would just multiply these two. Well, you do multiply them, but the probability of we write not graduated, but the probability of them being happy is dependent on whether or not they graduated. So when you write the second part, you write the probability of them being happy given that they did not graduate. In which case, the probability that they didn't graduate is 0.15. And the probability that they were happy given the fact that they didn't graduate is 0.6. So when you multiply those together, you get 0 0.09, which is 9%. So that sums up conditional probability.